Welcome to this Smith & Nephew Digital Education module on the skin, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. Today we'll be discussing the basics of the skin and by the end of this module you will be able to identify the differing layers and understand how they interact with each other. The skin is a complex arrangement of structures with a range of different functions. It's the largest organ in the body, weighing approximately one sixth of the body weight and varies in thickness according to function and its location. The skin is composed of two main layers, the epidermis and dermis. Beneath the dermis is the third layer called the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer. The normal pH of the skin is between 4 and 5.5. Being acidic in nature assists with protecting the body from certain bacteria and fungi. Changes in the skin may be one of the first indicators of underlying health problems, making knowledge of what's considered to be healthy skin extremely important. For example, if cyanosis is observed where the skin appears blue, this can indicate poor oxygenation of the tissues. The epidermis and dermis are made up of sublayers. You can see in the epidermis that there are five cell layers. The stratum basal is the nearest layer to the dermis located under the epidermis, and it's the only layer that consists of cells capable of division. The stratum spinosum is five to 12 cells thick. Cells travel through the epidermal layers towards the surface of the skin. They become longer and flatten horizontally and form the stratum granulosum, which is now composed of three to five layers of flattened keratinocytes. The stratum lucidum is a layer found in areas such as palms of the hands and soles of the feet and provides some degree of waterproofing to the skin. The stratum corneum is the outermost layer and consists of 25 to 30 layers of flattened dead keratinocytes. The cells contain keratin, a protein which help protect the skin and underlying tissues from microorganisms, chemicals and heat. These cells undergo mitosis, division, in the stratum basal and migrate upwards through each level until they are shared at the stratum corneum. This process can take place over a 28 day cycle. Finally, we come to the dermis, which lies beneath the epidermis. It's firmly attached to the epidermis via the dermoepidermal junction. It's responsible for providing nutrients and physical support to the epidermis. It contains lymph vessels, nerve endings, hair follicles and glands. As you can see, the dermis is composed of two layers, the reticular and papillary layers. The papillary layer contains nerves and capillaries that feed the epidermis. The reticular layer is made up of collagen and elastic fibres or strong connective tissue. Collagen and elastin in the dermis are arranged in a woven network of fibres giving tensile strength and providing the ability to stretch and contract. Below the dermis lives the subcutaneous layer. This layer is made up of connective tissue, fatty tissue and larger blood vessels. This provides support to the dermis and the fat stored here provides protection and insulation to internal structures. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the quiz questions. Du har nå fullført denne Wound Club online-modulen fra Smith & Nephew. Hvordan vil du bruke det du har lært i jobben din? Klikk på lenken i forklaringen. Den vil ta dig til full versjonen av denne presentasjonen. Den varer bare i 15 minutter. Du kan laste ned et kursbevis etter du er ferdig. Tusen takk for at du tok deg tid til å ta kurset. Ikke glem å se på de andre modulene for å få mer faglig oppdatering om sår og sårbehandling.